Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands and I've been living in the Netherlands for about three years now and I've noticed that Dutch people seem to be overall happy and content in life. Now that is in complete juxtaposition to the fact that I see Dutch people complaining about every little thing. But maybe the fact that Dutch people complain about every little thing indicates that the big stuff is more or less okay. I have noticed overall and their statistics and numbers and surveys, all of the good stuff to show that the Netherlands is one of the happiest countries in the world and that generally speaking, they tend to rank higher than the US when it comes to happiness. And in my time here in the Netherlands, I've been able to observe some cultural differences that I think might play a role. So I invite you to come explore this topic with me in this video. And now before we get into the details or my experiences that I'm gonna share with you, I did wanna throw out this big disclaimer that I do not hate America. That's not to say that I don't see certain problems with the way things are done in the United States. I do, but I also hope that the country can change them, learn from everybody else in the world. And I think honestly, all countries have something to learn from other countries. So all that to say that I am not hating on America, the numbers just show that the Netherlands is happier than the United States. So let's get into it. So in part one, I wanna talk about what I think is stopping Americans from being happy and what I've observed here in the Netherlands. And that has to do with equality, being equal, even if you have more means or you have more money that you still outwardly portray yourself as being just like everybody else. Let's, let me explain that a little bit because if you're an international, for instance, coming to the Netherlands, one of the first things that you will hear around you is this phrase, do normal. That's how Dutch people tell you to stop trying to stand above the crowd, go above and beyond or act weird in any way, just blend in and that is all this motto and philosophy is about, do normal. It almost sounds like you're scolding a child a little bit, like do normal, like if your child is making noise, but it also transcends to this behavior that you see in society. The Netherlands, it has this extremely Calvinistic history. So because of it, everything is really sober. Like even if you look at the architecture, it's beautiful, but in a very subtle understated way, you won't see this ornamental architecture like you see in maybe Southern European countries or other countries. This, the Netherlands is, is very plain. There are no bright colors on the street even. This applies to people as well. I feel like Dutch people on the street, they dress very practically, simply. They're still stylish and fashionable, but at the same time, it's not very expensive looking. It's just very clean, simple, put together, as opposed to flashy, lots of jewelry or expensive things. Like you don't really see that. There are certain status symbols that are around, like how expensive your bike is. If you have those fancy electric bikes, for instance, but those are all honestly the exceptions that prove the rule. Another behavior that I actually see in Dutch fashion that indicates this is that if there is something that's considered cool, everybody does this. And of course, that's the case in other countries too. That's why it's called a trend. But here the trend is more about being like everybody else and fitting in and just, it's not an expensive trend necessarily. It's just a fashionable trend and everybody's doing it. So like if there's a d type of scrunchie that goes in your hair, this is true fact, then everybody in the Netherlands will wear that scrunchie because it's almost like a uniform. The Dutch people like to all wear the same thing. Like everyone right now is going around in a certain type of like raincoat that's either bright yellow or green. It's just how things are done here because people want to look like others. They don't want to stand out. And even if they're trying to look fashionable, they do it in a way so that they blend in. So this to me already sounds a little bit like there's something going on. Dutch people are extremely community aware. They're aware of each other. And I wanna take this to actually talk about their work life here. People even take holidays and breaks at the same time in their work. People like to work from nine to five. They, th you start to see these similarities and uniformity also within people's work life. Not to mention that income is progressively taxed so that at a certain point, even if you work more, you kind of don't earn that much anyway. So that almost discourages people from working a lot, a lot, or preventing them from maybe trying to earn way, even more money or even more money because, well, at some point, 
the difference just isn't that much. So why am I spending time talking about this? Because let us now take this and contrast that to what I have experienced in the US. And I feel like you cannot see a more different picture. In the US, I think there is this concept of a rat race, um, dog eats dog type of culture where everyone's trying to get ahead. And there is a good side to that because I do feel like overall, Americans have a lot of ambition and there can be some good things that come with ambition, but there is also the downside of ambition or too much ambition. And that is really what I see when I think about the US. I really think of this concept of a rat race that your next house has to be bigger than your current house, or you have to buy a house if you're renting, or you must get the latest fashion trends, or you must have the most expensive car. Uh, you must, and you must. And I mean, it's keeping up with the Joneses. Ah, come on, the US has keeping up with the Kardashians. It's actually the same. And people are always trying to chase the next big thing and earn even more money and have an even better lifestyle. And honestly, that never stops because you get used to a certain quality of life and then you want even more of that and you keep going, you keep working and you keep chasing and you're never satisfied. I also think that people in the US tend to feed this in each other because working long hours at jobs, for instance, is really glorified. Like if you say, oh, I'm so busy, I have to work late night in the office. There's a little bit of pride associated with that, that I'm doing something great. I have a job where I have to work so much. And to me, coming from New York City, I actually saw this where people who were older than me uh, at the time when I was living in New York City, so they had already been at their jobs for a while, I would hear how they had just spent, you know, 100 hours at their jobs and then whatever free time they had, they felt like they had to extravagantly spend their money. And they would then just go to clubs and buy, have bottle service, rent a table, and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars for one night. They were working so much, so they felt like they actually deserved to spend a lot of money. Now, that is in itself an interesting idea that the more money you spend, the better, or that, that somehow spending more money measures how good your life is, because you can never spend enough money. I also feel like because of this emphasis on buying things and spending money, because this idea that you have to buy things and be a good consumer has really been drilled into Americans and American culture. That is a bold general statement, I know, but then I wouldn't have anything to say in these videos if I didn't make bold general statements. But, you know, assuming that there are nuances to this, I trust you to know that, I feel like it's also cultivating inequality in society because you're talking about how much people can buy things and you're always asking yourself, oh, can I afford more than my neighbor or my friend? And this is human nature that you wanna compare yourself to other humans, but at the same time, it's done to such a degree in the US that I really think it's preventing people from being happy because there's always gonna be someone who has more money than you, unless you're one of the few at the top, but you're always gonna meet people who have more money than you and everybody in that middle class is just comparing themselves and as opposed to seeing yourself as equal to someone else and just having a comfortable, happy life. So I've talked about inequality and the rat race and consumerism, but now I really wanna talk about this idea of being competitive. Competition, of course, to some degree goes hand in hand with ambition and Ambition can sometimes be a good thing, as I've said. However, I feel like extreme competitiveness is also a difference that I've seen in the US and the Netherlands, and I can't help but ask myself, does this also play a role? One of the things that always impresses me about Dutch people is how everybody has a hobby. And I'm not talking hobbies like, oh, I like hanging out with my friends and I like sitting on the couch watching Netflix, because in that case, check and check for me. But no, Dutch people have real hobbies like basketball, rowing, like actual sports, or they'll take language courses, other types of courses, or they'll, you know, go hiking and it'll be an actual, with an actual hiking club and they'll spend weekends doing it. It's really this hobby lifestyle. Like every Dutch person I talk to almost, I can't think of anyone right now who doesn't have this hobby on the side where they'll have their job and then they'll have their hobby because their self-worth is not just what they do for a living, but it's also having this balanced lifestyle where they also have a hobby. Now, in the US, there are some people with hobbies, for sure, if they have the time 
Americans like to do fun things as well. The problem is that I find that a lot of people doing things on the, on the side for fun, it actually turns into competition for them as well. So let's say now you're doing photography for fun. In the US, you'll immediately talk about, oh, how can you make photography your side gig? Or can you, how can you improve yourself and keep improving yourself? And, oh, maybe photography can be your next career. And it's all of a sudden, now this thing, this hobby that you are doing for fun, has become a business or your it's, it's a, another realm in which you need to be competitive and you need to be better than other people. So why can't photography just be photography? But basically, I am just impressed by how Dutch people can do a hobby and enjoy it. And yes, of course, there's sometimes contests for these hobbies, but it's not the point of the hobby. The point of the hobby is to meet people and go get a beer afterwards, obviously. Now, following all of these points that I've touched on so far, also comes stress and naturally try, you know, inequality, competitiveness, all of that leads to stress and trying to work long hours. And I, I just cannot tell you the number of times when I lived in the U S people would talk about how little they were sleeping and how many hours they worked. Does this sound familiar? If you think of U S tech, they all talk about how hard they work and how little they sleep. And it's really another, another area in which you can be competitive. There's so many conversations in the U S that just go like, Oh, I'm so tired. I slept six hours last night. And then someone else would go oh, six. I wish I could get six. I only got four and oh my God, I have basically haven't slept in 10 years. Ha ha ha. And people laugh about it and compete about how little they sleep. And it's just not healthy. And also why are you competing about how unhealthy your lifestyle is? This makes, no sense. Well, and don't worry, some Americans have caught on to the fact that this makes no sense. So instead they now pretend that they are calm, cool, and collected on the outside, but on the inside, they're struggling and waiting underwater like a duck. So they're working really hard, but everyone on the outside just sees how cool, calm, and collected they are. And their lifestyle is just effortless and flawless. And they can do three different hobbies and work a hundred hour job a week and just do everything with perfection. And that is also a problem. So that was sad, but now I wanted to talk about something positive because I like to end my videos on a positive note. And I want to talk about what it is that I think makes Dutch people happy. So I think a lot of what I just said could touch on why Americans are unhappy and a little bit on why I think Dutch people and the Dutch culture fosters happiness. But, I want to talk about more what you can do concretely or what are those aspects you can focus on that would allow people to be happy. I remember reading an article a while ago where researchers followed over 200 Harvard students and the outcome of that research was that the thing that made people happy was the fact that they had relationships in their lives. I thought that was such a beautiful conclusion. So generally, it looks like relationships are what make people happy. And it's really interesting because I've seen that play out in Dutch culture. I find it annoying to the umpteenth degree that whenever I try to plan anything with a Dutch person, it is such a hadoo. It is just such a pain in the behind. Like I almost don't want to hang out with people because it is so much trouble to schedule something, but I do. And so do other Dutch people. And you know why it is so difficult to schedule something? It's because Dutch people have a full social calendar, not just with work and hobbies, but also actually seeing people. They'll schedule it in. Hey, I'm going to have coffee with so-and-so on this date. I'm going to have dinner with these people. And they're not just spending all their time by themselves or with their partner on the couch watching Netflix because there's always something new to see. So for me, this big takeaway really was make time for your friends. They're important. Build a network have roots, have a community around you that you can trust. And I really think that goes a long way. So in the U S what I'm about to describe actually happened all the time. And I thought nothing of it at the time. This was so normal to me where let's say I had a friend from high school and we would run into each other and we would say, Oh my God, let's catch up. It's been so long. And then we would never see each other again. Maybe down the line we would, but it wouldn't be this immediate, okay, let's plan a time to see each other. Let's stay in touch. People lose touch all the time. And that in part has to do of course with that the U S is bigger and people are busy, but this was really normal. Like in this conversation, both parties know full well that you will not be meeting up, but you still say, Oh my God, 
Let's catch up sometime soon. Oh, let's do a coffee or drink or something. Oh, sounds great. Bye, see you never. And that's horrendous. I can't believe that we all just do that in the US and think that nothing is wrong with it. So as I said in the beginning, this isn't a hate on America episode. I love lots of things about the US. I am American. And in my time living in the Netherlands, I just have started seeing things in a different way. And I wanted to share these things with you because I hope they could be helpful to you or somebody you know, or at least the very least just food for thought. Anyway, that was all for today. And as usual, until next time.